And welcome back, everybody. I'm your host, the Dr. Bob Lee. Hey, on June the 13th, Community Access will hold an open meeting on crisis intervention teams in New York City. And joining us to share more about their work and what we can expect, we have advocacy coordinator Carla Lobinowitz. We welcome you to the show. Hi, so I represent Community Access, and Community mm -hmm. Access expands opportunities for people living with mental health concerns to recover from trauma and homelessness by providing mostly affordable housing and job training. And we also have a small division that works on social justice reform for people with mental health concerns. Mm -hmm. Community Access is a pretty big organization. We operate 22 supportive housing buildings. We house 1,100 households, and we pioneered about 40 years ago mm -hmm. the model of mixing low-income families with those with mental health concerns in one building and providing support to everybody. Now, do you deal with a, a certain department, a certain organization, or everybody, all is included, they can contact you for men mental health issues? So you can contact me at the Advocacy Department for Mental Health Issues. Um, we do housing. We also have employment training. That's for people with mental health concerns. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things in our Advocacy Department that I am a part of that we're working on is crisis intervention team training. So Tell you us about that. All right. Yeah. So basically, you know how when police respond to a crisis call, they're trying to gain control of the situation by the threat of force or stern language, telling people, mm -hmm. you know, go to the floor, or drop whatever's in your hand. And that doesn't work for people in mental health crisis because a person in extreme emotional crisis yeah. is not responding rationally. There's a new way, not a new way, but there is a proven way of training people with training officers to respond to people with mental health concerns. It gives yeah. the officers another tool to de-escalate the situation, to recognize, hey, this person is really symptomatic, they have a mental health concern, let me try to talk reflective listening to them. Let me try to mellow out the situation. So what is that, what is reflective listening all about? Because you know, there's just cases like Eleanor Bumpers and there's numerous other cases where people are coming at you with a knife and you know, there's, there's that, uh, that distance yet that the police officer has to keep. It's 30 feet. Now if they come in within that 30 foot space, then it's dangerous. Yeah, well, in most situations, it's not a person with a knife, but even if it is, there are ways that, that you can train an officer uh, how to de-escalate the situation by, you know, approaching the person in a compassionate approach. What are they feeling? Just repeating back what they're saying, mm -hmm. putting some distance between, taking the time that's needed to de-escalate the situation. And we've, uh, our coalition, Communities for Crisis Intervention Team Training in New York City, CCIT NYC, we kind of convinced the mayor to look at CIT training, which has been used in 33,000 communities in the U.S. Sure. And the mayor, he really bought into it, and so did the police commissioner. And they said, okay, let's train 5,500 officers, which is a lot of officers, yeah. in this 36-hour training. And so far, they've trained about 2,200 officers. And we're really grateful that the police commissioner and the mayor are putting so much effort mm -hmm. into this de-escalation training, which has been proven to reduce injuries both to the police and to the mental health recipient. Unfortunately, we've recently noticed a shocking new tactic used by the NYPD to restrain people. So what a segment of the NYPD is doing is they're putting people in body bags when they transport them to hospitals. Whoa, whoa. Well, that's a new tactic? That's a new tactic they're using. And uh, it's really dangerous because you can imagine if you're a veteran and you've seen people come home in body bags. Oh, yeah if you're a domestic violence victim and you've been confined into like a small space or you're suffering from a trauma and well, you can't you're going to fight like hell to, yeah you're going to fight like hell not to get into these bags so that's something that we are going to you know work on i mean at this forum the body bag is a restraining it's a restraining tool, tool. you know that's something we're going to work on in our talks with the police we're giving them great credit for doing the cit the de-escalation training mm -hmm. but we still have concerns we're working with them and at this forum on june 13th we're going to try to better inform people living in the Bronx about uh, there's a lot of initiatives happening mm -hmm. with the NYPD and the city. Some they've started, some they're planning to start sure. dealing with police mental health relations. So we're going to talk about the good and the bad. So, and, and, and you know what? Uh, I think a lot of the institutions that they used to have are no longer in effect. So a lot of people who are suffering from mental illnesses, they go to jail. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, one big problem is the funding for community services aren't quite there. So we've been doing this campaign, New York 
New York 4 campaign, Campaign for New York, New York Housing, trying to get 35,000 supportive housing apartments where you provide support, you've, you know, one-on-one -on -one working with people. Yeah. We got the mayor to put up 15,000 units citywide and the governor to put up 20,000 units statewide. Unfortunately, we're running into this big problem. It's yeah. always funding, right? The governor said, okay, we'll give $2 billion for this supportive housing and other housing funding. Does that include health care? Because you need meds for... Right. Well, in this housing, you have, su in supportive housing, you have caseworkers who help work with you and meet you once a week and work with you. There's this problem with this money, though. They've allocated the money, but now the governor has to reach an agreement with the high-level state officials. Yeah. And if they don't reach that agreement by June 28th, all this money disappears. So that's kind of a big problem we have in the mental health community, the funding for it. I mean, uh, the, mayor and the mayor's wife has been great. The mayor came up with the 15,000 units of housing. The governor also came up with the 20,000 units of housing. But then the governor, by June 28th, has to get the officials in New York State government to reach some agreement. Otherwise, the $2 billion we work for for this housing funding so where does the buck stop? At the governor's office? or Right now it's the governor and the state it officials. Stuck? The governor and the state officials. Would you like to talk to the governor <laughs> and the state officials? <laughs> yes. All right, here's a camera right here. <laughs> yes, supportive housing is a proven method to keep people out of hospitals and shelters and prisons. Uh, it's worked for 40 years, you know it, and we know it. So please find a way to work together in the state government and release the $2 billion, not only for supportive housing, but all the other housing Mm -hmm. housing work we need. So they should contact you if they want to talk more? Yes. And tell them. You can contact uh, me, Carla Rabinowitz, at Community mm -hmm. Access at the numbers listed above, numbers listed below. Mm -hmm. And is there a website where they can go for more? Yeah, for more information on police mental health community relations and the event June 13th, you can go mm -hmm. to www dot c c i t n y c dot org. That's mm -hmm. www c c i t n y c dot org. And for more information on community access, you can go to www dot community access dot org. Mm -hmm. And and that number, I, I see the number here is two one two seven eight zero fourteen hundred. Yes. Extension seven seven two six. All right. I hope uh, the governor and uh, some of the other people who are who need to hear it, heard uh, your information, and uh, we can get the ball rolling and, and help others get what they need out of life. Thank you. Thank you for all your information here. Carla Rabinowitz, give her a big round of applause, everybody. Advocacy coordinator, Brenda Fields. Hi, how you doing? Brenda Fields didn't make it in today, but uh, we wave a hand to her, too. She's an advocacy specialist. You know, we got to take a quick break right here, but uh, first, the Bronx Fathers taking action. They held a night of tennis and fun. Let's take a look.